The video you just watched showed 3D layers where you have a piece of artwork like me and another piece of artwork in front of that in Z space. And then you can move things at different rates to give the illusion a parallax. You also can take those layers of two-dimensional artwork and fold them together to create different forms in 3D that you can revolve around, add lights to, atmospheric effects. I'm going to show you the other type of 3D layer where you have a 3D object that is then used within After Effects to create your environment or to tell your story. If your story is very realistic, you might want to start with things such as photographs, videos, and 3D models. All depends upon your storytelling style. Here I'm at sketchfab.com. Think of 3D models as three-dimensional clip art that you can use in After Effects on a layer. Click the downloadable because you want downloadable and you pay for most of this content. You could go to different sources out online. I list a few below. Find free content. You could also make your own content. But this site has free models and here's one of them. So maybe I want to use this one in my story. Let me scroll a little further down and you can find the download button right here. Click download, choose your file format. These two formats have the potential to have photorealistic shaders within them to make your scene look even more realistic. FBX is an older file format that doesn't have the photorealistic shaders. This is usually very good for animated characters. USDZ is an upcoming format where it's a more open world description, universal scene description format. For now, choose something with a GLB file format when you're downloading 3D files. And now I have the choice of my texture sizes, 2K or 1K. You can see there's the amount of room it'll take up. I will think I'll go with 1K and it's downloading. Treat 3D models like any other asset. File import or right click here and select import file. Go to your downloads folder or wherever you stored the file locally on your computer and select that file. Um, this is the .glb file and click on open. I'm gonna make a new composition clicking right here. And I wanna choose 1920 by 1080. Click on okay. I'm selecting this file and just dragging it down here. 3D models in your composition require the use of an advanced 3D renderer to be visible. The renderer has been changed so you can work in this scene. That's great, so I'll click OK. I'll just click OK again. Here's the file in the scene. The layer has been set to 3D. The renderer is set to advanced 3D. And I'm gonna skip the tour. Now you're ready to continue. Let me rename this comp, Lunar Tourism. To manipulate this object in 3D, you use the tools up here. Shortcut is the C key, right there. So C will allow you to orbit. C again will use the panning tool, up and down, left and right. C again will dolly in, dolly out. When I'm using the C key, this is moving the virtual camera within here. If you wanna move the actual object, go in here and you can expand the properties for transformations, move the object itself. So the C key is moving the camera, toggling between orbiting, panning, and being able to dolly in and back while this is actually moving the object within here. If I press the V key for moving, I can move this object and watch these numbers change as I move it. So this is the X axis, the Y axis goes up and down, and the Z comes out towards us. Let me zoom in, see if I could get my Z axis. A little hard to click sometimes in the 3D viewport depending upon the orientation of your model. Okay, given all that, let me hit a bunch of undos. Optionally, you can place a camera in the scene, right click, new camera. And you can use both the positioning of the camera to animate the scene as well as moving the object. Let's keep it simple and not use a camera yet. 
So I deleted it. I'm going to just rotate this object by selecting the layer. You're given the gizmo. So let me rotate this. And back to if you need more fine tuned controls, opening up the transforms will allow you to just rotate things this way. Now maybe I'll dolly out. Continue playing with your shots. Next, to animate this, it'll be like animating anything else. Let me push this, picking up the V key again. So this way I can just take this object and just move it on its axis. Back down here. A little off screen. Expanding the transforms. Uh, for position, I'll press the stopwatch to add my first key. And I'm going to hit Command to switch to frames. About two seconds later, which is 60 frames later, I want this object to be about here. Press the space bar. And there's our 3D object sliding onto scene. The other video covers easing ins and easing outs. If you could convert this key to an ease in. That way it just slows down when it arrives here. Let me add a light to the scene. Right click, new, light. I'm going to select, not spotlight, a point light. That's like placing a light bulb in your scene. So point light, and I'll click on OK. And you can see the effect this light has. Let me just move it. And you can add as many lights to your scene. I'm going to select this light and expand it now. Under light options, you can increase the intensity for a more dramatic look. You also can change the color of the light by clicking there and just picking another color to give it a mood. Of course, you can animate all these properties. Let me set it back to kind of this warmish color. To duplicate a light, it's like any other object, Command D. Now you can place it over there. I'm going to switch to two views and set this other view, let's say to the top. This can help you with the placement of things like lights or 3D objects in your scene. I'll select this light and move it down. And forward. Going back to one view and playing the scene. Time to add some type and this could be just a two-dimensional type layer or you can place it in 3D as well. You can increase your font size over there. Pick your font. Turn on title action safe. And now you can have this guide to help you line things up. Let me type another piece of text. I'm duplicating this layer. Just dragging it a little lower. setting the size of the type, and feel free to play with the layout. So now I have these two layers. Let's take a look at this. Maybe we want the text to fade up as this happens. I'm going to pre-comp these two layers together, right click and select pre-compose, but since it's off screen, I'll go under layer, pre-compose, Call it title, and I pre-compose these two layers to make it a little easier, pressing the T key, making it a little easier to apply effects to both of those layers at the same time. So right here, it's going to be 100%, and let me just go back. Command, Shift, left arrow, goes back 10 frames, and 
Command Shift left arrow again, down 20 frames back from here. I'll set it down to zero. And you would continue your animation from here. This is just a regular pre-comp in 2D. If I want to manipulate it in 3D, all you have to do is click the 3D cube on that layer. I'll click on OK. And now that type is in 3D space where the ship is passing in front of it. And if I continue the ship's animation, we would then just see the type appear there. So there's a lot of things you could play with. I would then probably bring in this layer a little later like by just dragging over the whole pre-comp. Let me continue this ship's path. Going here, pressing the U key. And I'll just make the ship go off the screen. Let's take a look at that animation now. Let me nudge this a little sooner. So I move the title to come up a little quicker. Still even quicker than that. This shows how working with 3D objects is pretty easy. And by using lights, a 3D object, you could quickly create an environment and then play with 2D layers or 2D layers that then you convert to a 3D bin. So this way you could play with them in 3D space. Instead of scaling up, I'll do one little extra thing. Here's my title sequence. Let me press the U key. My two opacities are on it. Maybe right here. Instead of using scale, let me expand all this. I'll bring this title closer to us. So clicking on position, and I want to move the Z-axis here closer to us, so negative number. So at this frame, it's at zero, and by here, just pushes in a little bit. And I'll add ease into this as well. reason not to use scale and use the movement of the object is because this way you don't have to deal with different objects scaled at different sizes. If they come together, they wouldn't match. If everything is a uniform scale, 100%, 200%, whatever you selected, and you're using 3D space, it's a better option just to move things within that 3D space to create cool moments.